Do you want an easy, secure way to access your home lab, your Raspberry Pi, or self-hosted services anywhere in the world? You've probably heard of Tailscale or Cloudflare Tunnel. Both promise hassle-free remote access, but they work in different ways with different benefits and different use cases. Today in Mackie Tech, we're gonna walk through how they work, how to install them step-by-step, step, and then we're gonna break down which one is best for you. So we'll start off with Tailscale, which is a private mesh VPN built on WireGuard's VPN protocol. It creates a secure encrypted network between your devices. Now in traditional VPN like WireGuard or OpenVPN, all traffic must first connect through a centralized server. And by contrast, a mesh VPN like Tailscale acts similar to a peer-to-peer -peer network where there's no central server and each Tailscale device can act as both a client and a server. The other benefit of tail scale is you don't need to mess with any annoying configuration files like traditional VPNs. Tail scale is ideal for remotely accessing your home lab or a NAS or maybe a Raspberry Pi where you and a small group or a peer-to-peer -peer group in this case need secure remote access. And like most peer-to-peer -peer networks, only devices with tail scale installed can connect to one another. This peer-to-peer -peer network in Tailscale land is called a Tailnet. Cloudflare Tunnel, in contrast, works like a reverse proxy, but is different in that your server initiates an outbound connection to Cloudflare. This means you don't need to expose any inbound ports on your firewall, making it easier and safer to share a hosted service like Nextcloud through a Cloudflare domain that you create, like nextcloud.mackytech.com. The result of this is I, I kind of feel like Cloudflare is great for securely sharing a hosted website or maybe a service for maybe a homeowners association or a small business uh, collaboration platforms like Nextcloud or maybe a hosted server for photos like we discussed in our image video. So let's set up both Cloudflare and Tailscale and run through how they work. Okay, so let's start with Tailscale. If you do not have a Tailscale account, go to tailscale.com, click on Get Started, It's Free, and log in with your preferred provider. After you've done that, open up a terminal on your server that you want to use, preferably something on your home lab, maybe a web server or a, a NAS or maybe a Docker container. I'm gonna use a web server for my purposes. This is the default command. This is the, the quick and easy command, I should say, to install Tailscale. Uh, it's just a curl command. If you don't have curl, you can do a sudo apt install curl. And what this does is this grabs the Tailscale and it installs it automatically. After that is completed, you'll see at the bottom here, it says installation complete. Log in to start using your tail scale by running sudo tail scale up. Do a sudo tail scale up, and that will start everything up for you. To check your status, if you're not sure, we can do a tail scale status, and this will tell us every device that has tail scale. So a couple different things on here. I have my phone, I have my Proxmox, my MacBook, a next cloud here that I was monkeying with, Antiques. Antiques is actually this one that we're on. So if we go back to the Tailscale website, and we have a couple different things of note here. So we have the IP addresses here, and we also have these names where it says Antiques here, PV1 Proxmox, and it's the same name over here This where it says Machine Name. Those are the magic DNS in Tailscale land. And those are what you can use if you're a device that has tail scale involved if you wanted to SSH into it. But you can also use the IP addresses that are in here. But if like if you're remote and you wanted to SSH into it from a coffee shop, you can use these names here, the proper names that it has here in the list. So the other thing that's interesting on here is that you have a little dot, dot, dot here over on the right hand side. And here is where you can actually edit your machine names which is what I did over here where it says antiques because that's the one that I'm logged in right now, even though it says web server here, it's under this name antiques. And if you want, you can go into any one of these machines, click on this option here and say edit machine name. And you can see here the default is it auto generates by the, the host name that you provide initially when you set up the device. But I can give it a different name. I just uncheck this and then I put in whatever name I want. And if I say, let's just say I put in 
iPhone 16 and say update name. Now if I go back to my terminal and I type in tail scale status, now you can see where it says iPhone 16. Now, if you wanted a more robust, more controlled way to install your tail scale on your device, you could go down to here where it has the environments you can use or the different ways you can install it. And let's just say, for example, you wanted to use Windows, we click on Windows and it launches into a new window where you download it and you click on an installer and then you install it from there. If you wanted to do it on a Linux machine like we just did, it has a plethora of different versions, um, different distributions. It's really the same idea. It's just a little bit more control and it gives you a little bit more transparency as to what's going on. But you can see up here, this is the way that we used and that works across the board. So let's just say, for example, that we wanna try out tail scale on the phone. So we'll launch our app, log in, and then we have our devices that we saw before in the website. And let's select the antiques website that I have. And I'm gonna select the magic DNS URL right here. So click on the copy icon. I'm gonna go back to a browser, paste that in, and here is the Antiques website. So you see that in the upper right-hand corner, I'm on a 5G network. You can see that it has the, the antiques.tail, blah, blah, blah. That's the tail net. And that's the website that we wanna access. So it's super simple. So to use Cloudflare Tunnel, we have to first get a domain that Cloudflare will use when we want to access our service. You can use whatever service you want. I signed up for Namecheap and I chose the domain name mackytech.channel. But you can use GoDaddy, Google Domains, or even Cloudflare's own uh, registrar, but you don't have as many options. It's, it's a little bit limited. So you're better off using a, a registrar like Namecheap or another one that's uh, well known. So after you get your domain, you go over to cloudflare.com, click on sign up, and then it'll ask you to log in. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in and it's going to load this dashboard. So once you log in, we're going to click on add a domain, and then you put in your domain up here that you've just created through your registrar. Click on continue and then it will walk you through installing it and setting everything up. It will ask you if you want to do a free one or if you want a paid one. So after you've activated your website, it will appear on here under your domains. So I'm going to click on this. You're going to get a notification that there are a couple of different house cleaning things that you have to take care of. You can see here that it says invalid name servers. So that means that your original registrar is still using the same name servers that it was set up as. So we have to change those name servers on your registrar. In my case, it was Namecheap. And it gives you the name servers that you have to plug into your registrar. So I'm going to go over to Namecheap. This is what I did before. Here is my DNS domain that I set up. I'll click on Manage. And then here is the name servers right here. What you want to do with uh, Namecheap anyway, is you want to click on this drop down, go to custom DNS, and then put in these two name servers here that it gave us on Cloudflare. Different registrars will have a different place specifically where you go, but it's usually under your domain or under managed domains or under DNS or something like that. The other thing that it wants us to do is it wants you to turn off your DNS security on your registrar account because you want to turn it on on Cloudflare. So we're going to go back over to our Namecheap website, and we'll go to Advanced DNS, and then mine is already turned off, but yours will probably be still turned on, so make sure that's turned off. And then you wanna go back to Cloudflare and then turn on under Cloudflare. And to do that, we're gonna to go to Configure DNS, and then go over to Settings over here on the left-hand side, and then you wanna go ahead and start the process to get it turned on under your Cloudflare account. So you want to make sure that you add your name servers and then you want to make sure that you turn off your DNS sec on your registrar and then go turn it on under Cloudflare. And there's instructions on it on the website as to how to do all this. And it will bug you about it until you do it. So log into the machine that you want to put Cloudflare on. I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi and I'm going to use the same Raspberry Pi we installed image on in our last video. First we want to do is we're going to install the Cloudflare client on here. And again, I will put all of this in my free Patreon. So first we're gonna make a directory, hit enter, and then we're gonna go ahead and get the repositories. And after we get the repositories, we'll do a quick update and install Cloudflare. Once those scripts are installed, we're gonna do a Cloudflare. You wanna make sure you type in flared, not flare, but flared, login. 
And what this does is the Cloudflare login, it'll give you a URL and it'll also open up a window on your browser. We're just gonna click on this URL here and the dashboard is opening up. This is where we're gonna select the website that we just set up. So if you don't see your domain here, you can search for it here, but you should see it come up when you click on that URL. So we'll click on macytech.channel, and it says to finish configuring this tunnel, we'll click on authorize. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna drop a little token on our machine. So it gave us a certificate on that machine we just used, and then it's gonna ask us to close the, the window here. And now it's saying that we have logged in and we're ready to go. So now what we do is we go back to our Cloudflare. Now we wanna go over to the left where it says zero trust. Click on zero trust. And under here, we wanna click on networks and then go down to where it says tunnels. And this is the tunnel we have right now, our next cloud tunnel. And we wanna create a new tunnel. So I'm gonna click on create a tunnel. And then I wanna make sure I select Cloudflare. Don't click on warp. That's a different entity altogether. So we'll select Cloudflare and then give it a name. And you wanna give it a name that is, you know, what the service is. In this case, it's image. So I'm just gonna say image, save on, save tunnel. So we've named our tunnel and now we're over on installing a connector. You want to make sure that we're on the correct environment up here at the top. We're just going to click on Debian because Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi are derivations of Debian. And you might look on here and say, well, we just did all this and we did. So the only thing we have to do now is we're going to copy this one command here. And then we're going to go to our Raspberry Pi and click on this. And then what that does is it tells the Cloudflare to automatically run every time the Raspberry Pi reboots, which is which is fine, that's what we want. And then we're gonna click on next at the bottom here. And now this is where we come to the kind of the fun part, I think. So now we're gonna select our domain, which is the Mackie Tech, and then we're gonna click on the subdomain. And the subdomain is what we're gonna, sort of our the tunnel that we made. You can use a different name than the tunnel you created, it's up to you. I'm going to use the same name just to make things simple. And then we want to select our service. By service, it means is it HTTP, is it SSH, is it RDP? Because there's so many different ways you can use this. We're on a local network, so we don't have HTTP, HTTPS. We're just going to use HTTP. And for our URL, and we're just going to use this URL right here. We're just going to copy it and paste it over to our image, just like this. Get this out of here, and then click on Complete Setup, and that's it. Now, if we go to our browser up here, let's, uh, we're not gonna use that anymore. We're gonna use image.mackytech channel, enter, and here is our login. And we can see that it is HTTPS. So it automatically gave us an HTTPS, and we can log in if we want to. Now, there's one challenge here. Anybody, their uncle can, if they know this address, like you guys out there in TV land, you can look at this address and go, hey, I can log into Mackie Tech's uh, image server. Fun, fun, fun. You're not going to find much interesting stuff there, believe me. So let's go back to our Cloudflare site. We want to create a little bit of protection. So I'm going to go over to the left-hand side to where it says access. And what I want to do is I'm going to create an application that blocks certain traffic. So we'll click on applications and you can see that I already have a, a, a Nextcloud access set up. So I'm gonna create a new application by clicking on add an application, self-hosted, which means that I'm running it here. And then I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say image access. And the session duration is gonna be 24 hours. By session duration, they mean that when you're actually, someone's trying to log into the website. It doesn't mean that's how long the application is gonna run. It's a little bit confusing. I'm gonna add public host name. So click on that, and then I'm gonna type in image, and then select our domain, Mackie Tech Channel, and then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and select next. And I left all of these as default in terms of using a custom logo when people log in. If you wanna have certain tags or certain custom pages, I just left all this as default and clicked on next, and then clicked on save. And so here is the application that we just created, image access. So we don't have any policies assigned yet where it says zero. So I'm gonna click on this little three button here and click on edit. And then under edit image access, I'm gonna click on policies, and I'm gonna say create new policy. And I'm gonna say image email access and then i want to make sure that the action is allow we don't want block just allow and then we're going to add a couple rules the first rule is going to be that you have to have a certain email address and you can use whatever one you want you can have emails ending in let's say gmail or hotmail i'm going to say emails so we'll say uh 
MackieTech at msn.com. It's not a real email address. And then we'll say add require. So requirement means that, that you have to have this also. We'll go down to country as an example. And I'm going to say you have to be in the United States when you're accessing this website. So if you're hanging out in South Korea, even if you have the correct email address, you're not getting in unless you have a really fancy um, VPN service. So after you put in your different email addresses in there, we'll click on save and it says policy save successfully. So let's go back to our applications and here's our, here's our image access where I click on, you can see there's still no policies assigned. So click on edit. I'm going to say select existing policies, image email access, and then click confirm and then save it. Now let's test these out. So let's go to our image that we created before. We'll click on this little refresh button and now it's asking us for an email. So we can put in our email and then it'll send us a code where we can go ahead and get access to the content. So I'm going to put an email address in there that I'll actually work. I'm going to click on send me a code. Okay, so I got my code. And there we go. So we can now log in. So Cloudflare does have a lot more hoops to jump through. It's a little bit harder to install, a little more involved. But in my opinion, it's a more robust service. It's better for accessing websites and services like Nextcloud and Image. So let's take this offline and we can talk about which one might work better for you. So as I mentioned earlier, I feel like TailScale is better for private home lab access for individual devices or for a small group. You can certainly use it to access a website that you're hosting, but if you're doing it for more than a few people, it doesn't become real practical. Um, you know, for more than three or four people, in my opinion, I think it's better to use Cloudflare, especially if you're hosting a website or a Nextcloud site, because no one needs to install anything, and it's just a lot faster and a lot easier to share. Uh, but that's just me. You know, let me know which one you would pick. Uh, let me know what you would want to use it for. Drop us an answer in the comments. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to Mackie Tech and to ring that sub notification bell. I will be posting these instructions for the walkthrough under my free Patreon tier. And I also offer paid tiers for additional support or if you need an extra hand. Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up today, folks. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be seeing you again very soon.